Hello my dear creative friend. Welcome to another episode of Creative Sparks. This one is quite different and again quite special. The story of Notebook is very very well written and uh, it moved me. I actually saw the movie first which is not what I normally do uh, but then my daughter, seeing how much I enjoyed the movie, she came across the book for Christmas that year and uh, I got the book as a present. So it was quite a lovely read and because this is such a beautiful and moving story, I wanted to see if it can spark something really poignant and beautiful inside of you and inside of me today. Enjoy it. There is something special, almost mystical, about spending dawn on the water, he thought to himself, and he did it almost every day now. Sunny and clear, or cold and bitter, it never mattered as he pedaled in rhythm to music in his head. Working above water the color of iron. He saw a family of turtles resting on a partially submerged log and watched as a heron broke for flight, skimming just above the water before vanishing into the silver twilight that preceded sunrise. He pedaled out to the middle of the creek where he watched the orange glow begin to stretch across the water. He stopped pedaling hard, giving just enough effort to keep him in place, staring until light began to break through the trees. He always liked to pause at daybreak. There was a moment when the view was spectacular. As if the world were being born again. Afterward, he began to pedal hard working off the tension, preparing for the day. While he did that, questions danced in his mind like water drops in a frying pan. He wondered about Lon and what type of man he was, wondered about their relationship. Most of all though, he wondered about Ellie and why she had come. By the time he reached home, he felt renewed. Checking his watch, he was surprised to find that it had taken two hours. Time always played tricks out there, though he'd stopped questioning it months ago. He hung the kayak to dry, stretched for a couple of minutes, and went to the shed where he stored his canoe. He carried it to the bank, leaving it a few feet from the water. And as he turned toward the house, he noted that his legs were still a little stiff. The morning haze hadn't burned off yet, and he knew the stiffness in his legs usually predicted rain. He looked to the western sky and saw storm clouds thick and heavy, far off but definitely present. The winds weren't blowing hard but they were bringing the clouds closer. From the looks of them he didn't want to be outside when they got here. Damn, how much time did he have? A few hours, maybe more. Maybe less. 